All right, guys. So this week we're going to be looking at uh, a really important concept. These are these are special verbs called stem changing verbs or boot verbs. All right, these pop up all the time. Um, the problem is that they're irregular, meaning they don't follow the normal conjugation rules. Um, but there's groups of them that all follow the same set of broken rules, if that makes sense. They have their own set of rules that they all follow, and there's a bunch of them. All right, so. There's a couple different kinds, and we're going to look at uh, these ones today are called E to IE stem changers, and I'll show you why that is here in a second. Okay. Uh, the important thing to notice is that in a verb, there are two parts. The first part of the verb, so if we have this verb perder, which means to lose, the first part of the word is called the stem. It's the part all the way up to the last two letters Okay, when it's unconjugated. There's always like an AR, ER or IR on the end, that's called the suffix. Everything before that is called the stem, okay? So these are called stem changers. That means that in this stem, something is changing when usually we only change the end of the verb, okay? Since these are called E to IE stem changers, you can probably guess that the E in the stem is what's gonna be changing and it'll change from an E into an IE when you conjugate it. So if you look down here in these conjugated verbs, you can see that these E's, they were E's here, and now they're IE's here, okay? Which is really important to do. The hard part about it is that not all of them do that. You can see that these two here stay E's and don't change into IE's, okay? So that going back to the beginning here, why they call, some, some people like to call these boot verbs, and you should know both terms because your other teachers you have or other classes may call them one or the other. Sometimes they call these boot verbs because if you draw a shape of line around the ones in the chart that stem changed, it looks like a boot. The ones that don't are left out, okay? So we're going to have to practice this a whole bunch because this is really important and it takes a while to kind of wrap your mind around it. And you have to, there's no indication of which verbs do this and which verbs don't. And there's also multiple categories. There's like four categories. Uh, that have different vowels changing into different other vowels. All right, so that becomes a little bit difficult. So it just takes a lot of practice, okay? The main concept is simple. I, I mean, I just explained it in a couple of minutes, but we have to practice it a lot, okay? Now, there are a bunch of very, very common verbs that fall into this category, okay? Let's see, let's make you see this a little better. So there's a little bit of a glare here, but... Um, these are included in the week 24 Quizlet set, okay? So you can see all of these typed up there clearly. This is the set for next week, okay? So what I want to do is start practicing these a week early because on next week's quiz, you will have to be able to conjugate these like this, all right? So make sure you can do that. Uh, but here's a list of them if you want to write them down early or mess around with them. That's what they are. We've got preferir which means to prefer, entender, to understand, perder, to lose, cerrar, to close, querer, to want, pensar, to think, empezar, to begin. Okay, now something you might notice is like a word like empezar, it has two E's in the stem. Okay, so how do you know which one to pick? So the rule is when you have more than one, you go with the E that's closest to the end of the stem only. So in this case, that would be this second E. Um, but on one like entender, you can see that there's three E's, one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end, okay? When you're looking at them, you don't count the ones that are in the ending, in this A-R, E-R, I-R ending. If it's an E-R verb, it'll have one in the suffix. You ignore the suffix. So that would mean that this middle E is the one that gets changed into an IE when we're looking at them, all right? Um, also included in the vocabulary are the seasons. We've got verano for summer, invierno for winter, otoño for fall, and primavera for spring, okay? That's just so you get familiar with them. Those are also included in that week 24 set. And it's important to know that they're there because some of your assignments for the week will use the seasons and they'll use these stem changers, okay? Uh, they also use colors, 
uh, because this week's vocabulary deals with clothing. And so you can talk about the clothing of colors, or sorry, yeah, the, the color of clothing. And you can also talk about which seasons those clothings are used in. So those are all going to be mixed in with your assignments for the week. And so you need to be familiar with those. So we've got rojo, anaranjado. Now some people will say naranja instead of anaranjado. They both mean orange. Amarillo, verde, azul, morado, rosado. Some people will also say rosa, marron. Sometimes you'll also see café and moreno. Negro, gris, blanco. All right? All right. Um, hopefully... That'll help you get through your stuff. If you have any questions, please email me or contact me and I'll help you through it.